Hi, thanks for tuning in today. I'm Julie. We are at the Chocolate Therapist Kitchen Club today, and I'm going to be making the best turtles that you've ever had. I'm going to give you all of the tricks that we use in my store, the Chocolate Therapist, on how to make amazing turtles right in the privacy of your own home. Now, these are the things that you're going to need before you get started, so make sure you have these items. I like to use these Pyrex bowls. This is a two quart Pyrex bowl. You can buy it on Amazon. I've got the links to everything that I'm gonna use below in the video, so if you wanna buy anything, you can. I also have eight ounces of our chocolate in there. Our 55% dark chocolate, the chocolate carrots. Now, everything that you make, if you don't start with great chocolate, no matter what you do, no matter how much effort you put into it, it's not gonna taste good. You absolutely have to get the most amazing chocolate. And I happen to like the Chocolate Therapist curvatures because they're all natural, no dyes, no preservatives. We're also soy free and gluten free, but mainly they just taste great. That is the key to good chocolate. So I have eight ounces of our chocolate curvatures, 55% dark chocolate curvatures in this bowl. And I have caramel in this bowl. Now, this is our caramel that we make. It's a Chocolate Therapist original recipe also soy-free, gluten-free, made without corn syrup. I don't sell this directly. However, you can buy a similar caramel to this. It's called BK, B-E-Q-U-E-T, just like that. BK caramel, and we used to use BK for a long time for our turtles before we came up with our own brand. So I would highly recommend that. And you can buy their caramels retail at different locations. Go to their website, check it out. I also have one cup of pecans. Now I'm making pecan turtles today, but you can use cashews, almonds, peanuts, whatever you want. I just happen to like pecans, so that's what we're gonna be making today. I also have the infrared thermometer for measuring the temperature of chocolate, because we're gonna actually be tempering the chocolate so that it is beautiful when it's all finished. We're gonna be bringing it to between 90 and 91 degrees, and this thing makes it really easy to do that. No more of this candy thermometer. That's just a little too difficult. <laughs> Again, information on how to buy this below. I've got these lolly molds and I just like the size of this mold, which is why I can't find just a plain round mold. So I got this mold to put the pecans into. And I think life of the party is the best place to get chocolate molds because they're inexpensive. You can spend five or six dollars on Amazon for this, or you can spend 79 cents on lifeoftheparty.com. So check that out. I'm also using a tray today, just a basic tray to put all my things on. You can work straight on the counter, but I just like having a tray, so. This is all there is to it. Eight ounces of chocolate, my bulk caramel, pecans, two bags, eight ounce, 55% dark chocolate, one chocolate mold, and one tray. Now the first thing you wanna to wanna to do is take whatever caramel you have and heat it up. And I'm gonna be doing this about two minutes at a time and checking it each time because I don't wanna burn it. So I'm just gonna stick it in the microwave quickly and get it going for two minutes. So this caramel has been in for two minutes and is just starting to get soft. So I'm gonna stick it in for another couple of minutes. And depends on how much caramel you have, I'm not gonna tell you what has to be in for a certain amount of time. Just put it in for two minutes at a time, and then as it starts to get warm, put it in for less time so you don't overheat it or burn it. I noticed this caramel started to bubble while it was in there, only at one more minute. So I took it out, and now I'm gonna stir it a little bit. I think I forgot to mention earlier that you do need a spoon, and I'm just gonna use a wooden spoon today. And this caramel is starting to get to the point where we're gonna be able to pour it onto the pecans. I'm gonna stick it back in the microwave for about 30 more seconds because it's pretty warm. This time, while that caramel's in the microwave, I'm gonna put the pecans in the lolly mold. Now again, this is personal preference. If you like a lot of pecans, put a lot of them on there. If you just like a few, just put a few on there. I like a lot. So I'm gonna put quite a few on there and then we're gonna be just dropping that hot caramel right on the pecans. So then I'm just gonna be pouring the caramel straight on to the pecans and just kind of spreading it around a little bit. Right on there, just like that, super easy. Make sure you get all the pecans. You can spread it out when you're done. We're only gonna be doing three at the moment. Obviously I'll be doing more because I have a lot more caramel in the future. 
So now you have your pecans covered with caramel and you need to let this sit. But these need to cool down because the chocolate that we're going to be putting on here is going to be in temper. And if you put chocolate that's in temper on hot caramel, it's going to take it out of temper and mess up everything. So I'm going to set these aside. And these are ones that we made at the store the other day. They're not quite as much caramel on these. You can see these. They've got the pecans, they've got the caramel on them. And we're going to be topping these with tempered chocolate. And I'm going to show you quickly how to bowl tempered chocolate in the microwave. Now, as I mentioned, I already have eight ounces of chocolate in here in this Pyrex bowl. And we're going to be heating it about a minute at a time, taking it out and stirring it. What I'm going to try to do is take this chocolate and bring it up to about 100 degrees so that all the crystals in it kind of start melting together. Then I'm gonna cool it back down with some more of our curvatures to under tempering temper, which is about 85 degrees, 86 right in there, maybe 87, and then bring it back up right to temper. As I mentioned earlier, that's about 90 to 91 degrees for this chocolate. So that's what we're gonna be doing right now. So I'm putting this in the microwave on one minute and I'll just be doing one minute at a time taking it out and stirring it in between. This chocolate's been in the microwave for one minute. It's barely started to melt but I'm going to stir it anyways. Again the goal is to make sure that you keep everything rotated so that it doesn't burn. I'm going to stick it back in the microwave for another minute and continue to do that until it's almost melted. You don't want it to get too hot because then it takes a long time to bring it back down to the right temperature. So I cut to the chase. I've been stirring this for a few minutes. Remember, this is a two quart Pyrex bowl and I had eight ounces of chocolate in it. I only put it in the microwave two times for one minute each. Now I'm gonna take my infrared temperature gun and shoot it and see how hot it is. It's 101 degrees. This is actually the perfect temperature. So don't stick it in the microwave for five minutes. It's gonna get so hot that you're not gonna be able to bring it back down. So remember I was telling you earlier, we bring it up, get everything melting, then we're going to take another bag, the other bag of 55% dark chocolate that we have and add a few pieces bit by bit to try to get back down to 85 degrees. So I'm just going to take this right now, put in just a few little pieces, maybe, I don't know, five, six, seven pieces and stir it. I'm not putting it back in the microwave again. My goal is to get it down under 90 degrees, which is 90, 91, that's the tempering temperature, right? You wanna just bring it back down. This is just a, a process that you do so that once you put the chocolate on the turtles and they're at room temperature, they have that beautiful shine to them. It's called tempering chocolate. So I have now been stirring this for about 12 minutes and it's down to 86 degrees and I'm gonna put it in the microwave for only seven seconds because I want to bring it back up to 91. It's better to just do a couple seconds than it is to overshoot it and have to add more chocolate in. And altogether, I've added about two thirds of this other bag of chocolate to bring the temperature back down into the 80s. So about seven seconds in the microwave once it's down into the mid 80s. Once you have it out of the microwave that last time, just hit it with your gun again, see what your temperature is. This is 90.3, so that's perfect for putting on top of the turtles. And again, the reason I'm doing that, this is the tempering temperature for our 55% dark, and this is what's gonna make it look perfect once you're all done. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of chocolate on top of each of these turtles right now, and then I'm gonna hit kind of crack the molds on the, oops, a little too much on that one. Too much chocolate, I don't even know if it's possible. <laughs> Putting the chocolate on the turtles and what you do now when you have your chocolate on your turtles, you just kind of let them crack down like that, drop them so they get to have a nice round shape to them and I see I need a little bit more chocolate on that turtle right there. He doesn't have to have enough. And now we're just going to let them sit for 10 or 15 minutes and you can also put them in the refrigerator if you want. So remember making these turtles, these little setups that I already had were done yesterday. So the chocolates that we did today are not ready yet have to let those sit until they're cool. So in quick review, I had eight ounces of chocolate in the bowl. 
I added almost another eight ounce to get it back. I was using whole pecans today. I was using Chocolate Therapist Caramel, but you can get similar caramel from BK. I had an infrared heat gun. That's how you make amazing turtles. And I just, I wanna point out again, how important it is to start with the most amazing ingredients. We use locally roasted nuts, all natural chocolate, caramel that doesn't have corn syrup in it. Every ingredient is so important. So don't go get that inexpensive caramel and chocolate that's so easy to buy at the grocery store. Step up your game, you deserve it. Thanks for watching the Chocolate Therapist Kitchen Club today. I'm Julie, owner of The Chocolate Therapist. These are some of the tips and tricks that we use in our own chocolate shop right in historic downtown Littleton. If you wanna to cut to the chase and don't wanna bother with making this at home, please check out our website where you can buy pecan turtles made exactly the way I showed you how to do it here today. Thanks for watching.